okay? Can you hear me? I didn't hear a peep from your room, and it really freaked me out. <laughs> You're not dreaming. We're in the Reverie Hotel. In the real world. The Order's dream is over. <sighs> Even though it's been a day, I still break into a sweat when I think about it. Our trailblazing expedition almost ended in Panacone. so jealous that you got a good night's sleep. I was traumatized and too scared to even close my eyes. I thought if I fell asleep, I'd never wake up again. The Stellaron was sealed while you were sleeping. The ordinary people in Panacone have no idea what happened. They just feel like something's missing from their memories. The family's official statement was like, The Charmony Festival was attacked by an unidentified Stellaron and came to a halt. After all, they can't just reveal the truth about the Order. Now, all the major lineages, except for the Oak family, are dealing with the aftermath. The family has invited the crew to the Radiant Feldspar as witnesses for an important meeting. Everyone's waiting for you, so hurry up and pack. We're leaving as soon as you're ready. <sighs> After all this craziness, nothing is better than staying safe in reality. It's a massive airship! And it's awesome! I heard it's never shown to the public. Only VIP guests of the family get to board it and enjoy the breathtaking views of Panacone. The Iris family sent us a bunch of souvenirs. Fruit baskets, plus this fancy button model. After you're back on your feet, you can enjoy them all. We are pretty much celebrities on the planet of festivities now, aren't we? The Stellaron was sealed while you were sleeping. The ordinary people in Panacone have no idea what happened. They just feel like something's missing from their memories. The family's official statement was like, The Charmony Festival was attacked by an unidentified Stellaron and came to a halt. After all, they can't just reveal the truth about the Order. Now, all the major lineages, except for the Oak family, are dealing with the aftermath. The family has invited the crew to the Radiant Feldspar as witnesses for an important meeting. Why the sudden interest in that? Well, I was dragged into the sweet dream. I felt a cold tentacle diving into my memories. But something else was there. So the tentacle suddenly disappeared. And then... I dreamed about stuffing my face with delicious food and going on a shopping spree. Sunday didn't seriously believe that was the life I wanted, right? Ugh, breaking free from that cheesy illusion was just a piece of cake. Yeah, let's go! We've got some time before we board the ship, so let's catch up with everyone at Dream Jolt Hostelry. extravagant just like epsilon how was it did it live up to your dreamscape expectations you already asked that when we first got here yeah and you said no back then but after
After all this madness, I'd say you've grown fond of it. Oh, just a heads up, you're still on the Bloodhound family's wanted list, so keep a low profile. And this time, it's Firefly in the picture, not Sam. That's gotta be a whole new experience for you, right? Indeed. In Kafka's words, that's also a missing part of my life. Still, it'd be quite inconvenient if I can't move freely. Could you help me out, Silverwolf? I knew you'd say that. Don't worry. I've hacked all the systems and left no trace. Don't do anything that may draw attention, and don't talk with guards. They might recognize you. Keep these two points in mind, and you can go wherever you want, unbothered. <laughs> Thank you. No problem, Miss Samuel. <laughs> I love this fake name. Now that we're done here in Panacone, what will you do in your free time? I hear the Genius Society is here. How about we go stir up some excitement? Well, you know my script isn't over yet. I didn't bring you back to hear an answer like that. Don't worry. The script says that I'll experience three deaths, but also receive an unforgettable reward on the planet of festivities. How will I know if I don't try? All possibilities exist until the outcome actually happens, right? You may not realize it, but you have a bad habit. Whenever you seem to be asking a question, you've already made up your mind, and no words will dissuade you. Anyway, Kafka asked me to pass on this message. If you see anything fabulous in Panacone, get one for me too. Just swipe my card, you know the pin. <laughs> She didn't specify anything, but I guess she means a dress, coat, sunglasses, or something else. You know better about fashion than I do. Sure, I'll keep an eye out. There's tons of options at OT Mall. <gasps> do you think she'll like trinkets, like uh, hair accessories or brooches? sound more like something for young girls. Maybe you should keep them for yourself. Oh, by the way, Blade didn't explicitly say it, but I think he was trying to say something like, Temptation will show up again in Panacone. <laughs> He's always so subtle with his words. Got it. He was just worried about me. Relax, Silverwolf. You know me. I won't do anything crazy. I just want to wander around and see more of the world for myself. <gasps> I want to buy some oat cake rolls. I've had a cake roll every day since I arrived in Penacone, from the first day to the last. But today, I'll buy two and give you one. And if you don't like them, I'll enjoy double the pleasure. Or I can bring one to Kafka, as she never refuses. Or maybe I'll give it to Blade. He'll appreciate it. That's not written in the script, right? But as you see... I 
I have added new footnotes to my destiny. Welcome, Director Topaz. The family ambassadors are still inside making preparations, but the big boss hasn't arrived yet. It'll be a while before the conference starts, I'm afraid. Huh. Quite a spectacle. The family really knows how to make things look impressive. I thought they would choose a more formal and low-key location for the conference. I didn't expect them to go with a luxury airship. About this, Director. I've asked around. This airship, named uh, the Radiant Feldspar, belongs to the Alfalfa family. This conference between the IPC and the family will have a direct impact on Penacone's future. Such an important event should have been held at it. <sighs> well... Somewhere secretive in the moment of morning dew. The atmosphere here... It doesn't feel serious enough. Hmm... <sighs> If I'm right, this conference is probably just a prelude. Whoever organized it wants to assess the IPC stance beforehand. This influential figure either has their own ambitions and wants to reach a preliminary agreement, or they plan to put pressure on us to make us back off. mind is always so sharp, Director Topaz. And when the big boss arrives, please remind her to be cautious and watch out for any traps. <laughs> Thank you for the reminder, but I don't think that will be necessary. When she's at the table, it's the others who need to be cautious. Just tell everyone on our team to stay focused on their tasks and not worry about the negotiations. Oh, got it. I'll do it right away. Oh, and uh, one more thing. Don't call Miss Jade Big Boss in front of her, or there will be serious consequences. I mean, really serious. Uh, uh, got it. <laughs> Thank you for the reminder, Director. figures have arrived yet. Huh. Looks like the conference won't be starting for a while. It's such a bustling place. I think I'll take a little walk around. Greetings, madame. What can I do for you? Hello. Could you tell me more about the Radiant Feldspar? I assume you are the ambassador of the IPC Strategic Investment Department. It's my honor to assist you. The Radiant Felspar is owned by Mr. Odie Alfalfa, head of the Alfalfa family. Mr. Alfalfa invested a significant amount in building this luxurious airship an Ember era ago, and it has been sailing across the 12 hours of the dreamscape ever since. Oh, so it's owned by old Oji himself. No wonder this ship is so lavishly decorated. 
Indeed, Mr. Alfalfa has impeccable taste. Only the most prestigious guests are invited by the Alfalfa family to board this airship. Please allow me to continue my introduction. The Radiant Felspar had been cruising over the Sea of Dreams in Penacony for an entire Ember era. But its voyage was temporarily halted due to the recent reverberation. Reverberation? <laughs> Such a formal way of putting it. You're really downplaying the whole thing. Uh, <laughs> I apologize. Please continue. <clears throat> Following the previous reverberation in the sweet dream, the Radiant Felspar had to suspend its voyage temporarily. Thankfully, the factors that disrupted the dreamscape have been resolved. However, due to, well, certain special reasons, the Charmony Festival originally scheduled at the Panacone Grand Theater had to be temporarily postponed. So, Mr. Alfalfa suggested relocating the Charmony Festival to the Radiant Felspar, taking this opportunity to announce the resumption of the airship's voyage. Ah. Well, that would meet the family's needs and also create momentum for Mr. Alfalfa himself. Quite fitting for a legendary tycoon like him. Thank you for explaining matters to me. Goodbye. So many buttons. How many centuries would it take to press them all? Huh. Didn't expect those pooches to actually recycle them all. Huh? What are these? <clears throat> For your safety, please stay away from those objects. For my safety? Are these buttons something dangerous? Not exactly. Lately, there's been a prankster in the sweet dream who's been handing out strange button devices to anyone he meets. According to those involved, he said something like, just press this button and all of Panacone will explode. Luckily, no one believed him. Still, the Bloodhound family collected these buttons just to be on the safe side. Where's that prankster? Haven't the hounds caught him yet? <laughs> yeah, that guy has some skills, I'll have to admit that. However, you know, the Bloodhound family won't give up. Whoever disrupts order in the dreamscape will face severe consequences. Anyway, the family will deal with these things. Please, kindly keep your distance. Huh? <laughs> I should have taken a bite first. <laughs> Hello? The talent motivation department? Again? Internal review? Will it ever end? 
I... I'm working on a major project. I don't have time to squabble with you guys. I... The way I handled the Urillo case was approved by senior management, and all of the project logs and calls are complete. Can't you check on them yourselves? I just don't understand. Why are you so fixated on this minor case and constantly escalating it? I... Seriously, what's your purpose? Sounds exhausting. Why not just hang up? In my opinion, you handled that project quite well. A little ball of ice in exchange for the Astral Express's good favor. That's not a bad deal for the department. It's been a while, little Yelena. I've been looking forward to working with you. Never imagined this day would come so soon. Is there trouble? You can tell me anything. Just like old times. Ah, it's been a while, Madam Jade. I'm honored to have the opportunity to work with you. You're still so formal, aren't you? Forget about the hierarchy and treat me as your equal. No need for unnecessary titles like Madam. <laughs> I'm sorry. But it might take some time to get used to that. After all, you are a senior. Well, now that we're both members of the Ten Stone Hearts, I need you to be at your best. Especially since the upcoming negotiations leave no room for error. As sharp as you are, I'm sure you've figured out the true purpose of this conference, right? I believe old Oti has taken it upon himself to test our limits before the official negotiations between the IPC and Panacone. That's true, and it works in our favor. Do you know why? If we can reach some sort of agreement with old Oti beforehand and gauge our opponent's boundaries, our future negotiations will go much more smoothly. That's the obvious benefit. Exactly. And the hidden benefit is that, as the head of the Alfalfa family, his actions suggest that the five lineages might not be as united as the Odes of Harmony would suggest. As long as the influence of Harmony hasn't completely permeated their core, Personal desires will always have their way. Thankfully, influential figures in Penacone haven't entirely suppressed their own desires. It's similar to the power struggles within the IPC. The supposed all-for-one philosophy shared by the five lineages. It's just a slogan now that the Dream Master has gone. After the downfall of the Yoke family, Old Oti's faction became the dominant force in Panacone. Even if we consider only the succession order, he's the longest serving and most senior among all the family heads. Yes, that's exactly why we need to handle the conference following an agreed upon strategy. It's like playing a game of chess, where every move needs to be carefully thought out. Absolutely. The three steps of negotiation. Listen, test, and strike. That's what you taught me. Pretty clear. Although, you seem to have changed the order in the Yarilo case. <laughs> that was based on my personal experience. I apologize for interrupting your conversation, but the family head is ready to meet the ambassadors from the Strategic Investment Department. Time to get to work. Let's prepare ourselves and meet that esteemed supporting actor. Remember, our goal is to create an opportunity for the IPC to enter Penacone. 
Aventurine has already made a small opening. And you and I, we're going to tear it wide open. <laughs> Welcome aboard my ship, the Radiant Feldspar, smart and charming ladies. Please, have a seat. Let's have a pleasant conversation. <laughs> Welcome aboard, my dear ladies. Forgive me for any lack of attentiveness that might have led to a lengthy wait outside. No problem at all, Mr. Alfalfa. It's my honor to meet you in person. You may not be aware, but the book Odi Alfalfa, the biography, is a must-read for all Strategic Investment Department employees. After all, to many, you are the legendary figure who single-handedly built the Penacony economy. <laughs> I expected no less from the Ten Stone Hearts from the Strategic Investment Department. You're definitely skilled in the art of conversation. I always enjoy talking to smart people because we don't have to beat around the bush. We can just get straight to the point instead. Since I invited you IPC ambassadors on board, I'm sure you've figured out the topic I'd like to discuss, yes? The future of Penacony, if I'm not mistaken. <laughs> Precisely. Those few words represent a terribly complicated situation, indeed. Let's take that golden-haired guy who's not showing up, for example. He put in great effort and almost got himself killed. But what was it all for? Wasn't it eventually to create an opportunity for you IPC to regain control of the precious Astana? <laughs> The wisdom and experience you've accumulated over ten Amber Eras are truly impressive. Let's assume your assumptions are correct, Mr. Alfalfa. How would you respond to the IPC's actions? I appreciate your composure, Miss Jade. You must have witnessed much in your worldly experiences. However... Perhaps you don't know much about Penacony. <laughs> Old Oti won't sit idly by when faced with a greedy wolf. <laughs> Please, go ahead. I'm all ears. <laughs> Then I'll be straightforward. I requested this meeting before the official conference to dissuade the Strategic Investment Department from trying to lay a finger on Penacony. If you back off now, you can make a smooth exit and prevent the IPC from losing face during more important negotiations. One of our P-45 executives was attacked and nearly killed in the dreamscape. The IPC can't simply ignore this incident. Moreover, considering the turbulence during the Charmony Festival, Penacony's credibility has taken a hit in the public's eyes. Despite your determined attitude, the issues plaguing Penacony are real, are they not?
You use the term real, Miss Topaz, but let's not forget that this is the realm of dreams. If you want to succeed here, you need ambition and unconventional thinking. Curious about how I plan to respond to the IPC? Well, I don't mind sharing. My actions will help Panaconi take a significant step forward by self-listing and going public. Going public? If I'm not mistaken, you want to bypass the IPC and go public on a universal scale. Precisely. Instead of watching the IPC gnaw away at Panaconi, I'd prefer to open the doors of the sweet dream to the entire universe. Starting today, anyone in the cosmos can become a shareholder of the land of the dreams. This is the path of harmony I'll choose. <laughs> This reform should have been implemented earlier, but unfortunately, the Oak family were a bunch of blockheads blinded by order. <laughs> Their level of intellectual flexibility doesn't even come close to an old fellow like me. Thanks to the little um, reverberation earlier, the biggest obstacle between me and my reforms has been eliminated. <laughs> the Alfalfa family will publicize the financial results of Sweet Dream Paradise, so that the entire universe can see that, despite the catastrophe, Panaconi still holds immense potential and opportunities, and that the family remains confident in its future. Hmm. Crisis and opportunity are two sides of the same coin. So, you've been waiting for the right moment for Panaconi to regain the spotlight. And if Panaconi should seize this opportunity to overcome adversity, even if the IPC tries to intervene, Every move we make will be scrutinized by trillions of people. <laughs> now I'm convinced that you've indeed familiarized yourself with my biography, Miss Jade. So, about your next move. Please, consider it carefully. Indeed. We need some time to digest such a wealth of information. I suggest we conclude the first half of our conference, Mr. Alfalfa. Please allow Topaz and me to confer privately for a few moments, and to respond on behalf of the IPC later. <laughs> of course. Take your time. Dear ladies. The Alfalfa family had a meeting with the IPC? I got this information from a message sent by that IPC ambassador. He said it was to return the favor. It's not hard to imagine. Panaconi today is pretty much like the frontier prison it once was, with external forces casting greedy eyes and the undercurrent of order lurking within. Instead of falling into a situation where they are plagued by both external and internal threats, Panaconi would rather take a step back and invite the IPC to negotiate at the table, ostensibly to cooperate, but in reality, 
to secure more opportunities for their own survival. Well, no wonder they sought the mediation from the Astral Express. In your opinion, who should we stand behind? I don't think the followers of the Harmony are completely innocent victims in all of this. For reasons unknown, they have a strong desire to smooth things over, which leads to speculation about their motives. If either the family or IPC were to assume full control of Penaconi, it would return to its previous illusory dream of hedonism, and the efforts of those previous nameless would once again go to waste. There you are. Did you rest well? I didn't disturb you since you were in a deep sleep. Yeah. Even long dreams eventually come to an end. Our adventure in Penaconi is reaching its conclusion. Hmm. After Anna's dream was shattered, the family branch from the Montour system soon arrived and swiftly took control of the situation. Most members of the Oak family fell unconscious, but fortunately, their lives were not in danger. <sighs> the mastermind behind the plans was confirmed to be Gopher Wood, the previous dream master. But by the time we arrived, he was dead already. He'll face a trial. As for further details, uh, the family would rather not disclose them. Ultimately, the public perceived the incident as an attack by evil forces targeting the Charmony Festival. They believe the family failed to safeguard the sweet dream significantly eroding their credibility in the process. While quite different from the truth, this appears to be the outcome with the least impact. After all, you don't know who's awake and who's pretending to be asleep. Well, they'll open their eyes in the face of danger. Once the danger subsides, they'll embrace the sweet dream again. Here's a toast, with three glasses of Glory of the Trailblaze to all of you. Yeah, it's good to see you all again. Although we might be saying goodbye again after this reunion. When will the Astral Express leave Pentagoni? We'll stay a bit longer, but not too long. So, this is our final meeting, then? If this is a farewell, then it seems to be missing something. Music? Atmosphere? Ah, maybe a special drink to honor those who are not here. Let's see, a mixed drink should be solemn, dignified, and unique, as we'll use it to pay respect to those fallen heroes. To the Nameless resting in peace, and to Gallagher. Ready to mix your drink? I'm not sure. I haven't seen him since our last meeting at the lounge. To think of it, he always did come and go quietly. We used to discuss everything here. But every time he'd leave, I'd realize that I didn't know him at all. Such is the mystery that is Gallagher. I have a hunch. Perhaps he's already fulfilled his wishes and won't be coming back. Before we start, uh, would you like to talk to your friends? We have plenty of time. All right, as you wish. Huh, I think I have an idea about what drink to make. Would you like it bitter or sweet? It's up to you. 
Choose the flavor that suits you best at this moment. Drowning sweetness. One of the most challenging drinks to make. A slight imbalance in the ingredients can result in an overwhelmingly viscous sweet taste. However, with the right ratios, you get a uniquely sweet drink with a lingering aftertaste. Not a bad choice. Let's start mixing. Words always fall short. If you want to bring closure to past events at this lounge, there's no better way than mixing a drink. Blend all your memories and emotions together and stir them well. Through the filter of time, what remains in the glass is something to savor. Well, it's done. Here's to the nameless resting in peace, and to my friend Gallagher. The spirit of freedom will spread far and wide among the stars, and its legacy will be more timeless than a pastoral song. We're not accepted by the outside world, so we've gathered here. One day, our souls will return to the same place. Cheers. Are you leaving? Well, then take this with you. I've mixed more of this last special drink for you. <sighs> the past shouldn't be forgotten. So I hope it brings back the flavors of Panacone. Thank you. Uh, I'm sure it'll leave a lasting impression. <laughs> if you happen to run into Gallagher, make sure he has a sip too. I know his tastes, and he'll be thrilled. All right, enough with the heavy stuff. You guys have important things to take care of, so let's not dwell on things. Whether it's the Astral Express or Panacone, there's still a long journey ahead. So let's lift our spirits, guys, and embark towards our tomorrows. Ah, 
Old Oti is a tricky opponent. I didn't expect him to take the risky step of going public at such a critical moment for Panacone. Indeed. He's definitely bold. It's that kind of boldness that made him the Odi Alfalfa he is today. Still, the outcome is uncertain. Shouting loud doesn't necessarily carry any weight. What about the phone call I asked you to make, Topaz? Ah, they agreed. But it'll take some time before they arrive. Just as it should be. The sweet dew should be served after the bitter poison. <laughs> Looks like we'll be skipping the exchanging apples step this time around. <laughs> now that we're dealing with a greedy merchant, a simple apple wouldn't make a difference. Well, I guess I included myself in that remark too. Now I'm a bit curious, Topaz. Do you think Panacone is a quality asset? Hmm, yes. Despite its recent calamity, Panacone remains a top quality asset within the cosmos. With, uh, good credit, lucrative potential, and, uh, promising prospects. Well, that's obvious. But what I truly wanted to know is... This project is obviously too bland for your taste, isn't it? <laughs> That's true. I wouldn't be here if it weren't for Venturine. But despite that, you trust him. You even entrusted him with a cornerstone. Something as precious as life itself to finish this gamble. Uh... Are you not in the same boat, Miss Jade? Without us playing along, your Jade Stone wouldn't have made it across the border so easily, allowing you to see all desires that flow through dreams to gain a bargaining chip in negotiations. <laughs> That's why I'm willing to stake my Topaz Stone to cover for you. <laughs> it's like one big elaborate game of chess. Once that kid sets his mind to something, nothing can stop him. Not even fate. <laughs> well, at least he's still alive. And that's the best outcome. <laughs> Looks like... Uh, we've strayed off topic, Miss Jade. Should we discuss our next steps? No need. I'll go it alone. Meanwhile, you can go greet our honored guest and wait for my message. Okay. Is that Robin? Huh. She's also here on the Radiant Felt's bar. Greetings, Miss Robin. I didn't expect to meet you here. Miss Jade? Greetings. The opening ceremony for the Charmony Festival has been moved to the Radiant Feldspar, so I'm here making some preparations. How about you? Have you spoken with Mr. Alfalfa? I'm actually on my way to meet him right now. Do you know him well, Miss Robin? Unfortunately, I've never met him. I've only heard a few comments from the former head of the Oak family. Mr. Alfalfa is respectable when it comes to business. But in other respects, I can't say the same. Hmm. Where do you think the future of the planet of festivities is headed? I believe the sweet dream will see its rebirth. Just like the Radiant Feldspar resumed its voyage. The Harmony needs a new direction. Only by bidding farewell to the past can we actually sail into the future. There are no permanent allies or everlasting enemies. 
So let's both take what we need from this deal. Naturally. I'm looking forward to your performance. See you at the festival. See you later, Miss Jade. Thank you for your patience, Mr. Alfalfa. Let's continue our discussion. <laughs> Figured out something already, Miss Jade? Hmm. But where is Miss Topaz? Topaz has something else to take care of. You'll be seeing her later. Talks can still continue between the two of us. Is it just me, Miss? Your tone sounds very different now. I need to set a good example for my junior. It's not a good habit to be too loose-lipped during negotiations, right? Now we can speak frankly and openly. Do you believe what I said, Odie? You're not the only merchant who has seen the changes in the cosmic market over the past ten Amber Eras. Interesting. <laughs> now that's interesting. Good. It's good to be straightforward. Openness and transparency are my things. So, tell me, what's your next move? Unfortunately, I'd like to speak the harsh truth before laying out my plan. <laughs> Let's cut to the chase. First, your plan won't work. Penacony has no way of sidestepping the IPC and going public. Second, you can't stop the IPC from entering Penacony. We've got all the time and connections in the world to find a way in. We'll keep tearing down and rebuilding this place until the Asdana system gets used to the IPC's ways again. Now, I'm repeating your words exactly. If you don't want to be a laughingstock and have everyone gunning for you at the official conference, you'd better drop your little pie-in-the-sky plan. Oh, interesting. Indeed. You surely have a way with words. Now, I'm curious to know what you have up your sleeve. Mr. Alfalfa, let's not forget that the IPC controls the biggest interstellar publicity platform. More than half the news networks in the universe take their orders from us. The moment news spreads about Penacony going public, trillions of customers will immediately receive a message like this. The family's protection for Penacony has expired. Any mishaps in the dreamscape could result in permanent brain death. Care to guess how many ways we have to turn alfalfa credits into worthless junk within a measly 24 system hours? <laughs> With the entire cosmos keeping a close eye on Penacony, I assure you, it won't be too hard. You really think you can pull that off? Even from Pier Point, as distant as it may be, I'm more than capable of keeping you on a tight leash. <laughs>